Okay, welcome back to Community Focus here on Channel 6 TV. Glad you could join us. I'm Kenny Fogel, and we've got with us today from the 4-H, Luke Freeze and Danielle Hutchins. And we're going to be talking a little bit about 4-H. One might even stray into something else every now and then. But Danielle, I'll let you start things off and tell us a little bit about... Well, first of all, I'm not even going to go into what all the H's stand for, but what is 4-H? 4-H is one of the largest youth organizations in the world, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and what makes 4-H unique from other youth organizations is we're backed by the Cooperative Extension Service. Mm -hmm. And so our programs are research-based. Um, we let other people be the guinea pigs, and uh, we figure out what works, and then we take that information and we adapt it to the needs of our community. So we work with advisory councils, um, and we look at what um, kind of common and emerging needs are happening in our community and then we tailor our programs around that. Okay. So we offer programs in a club format, um, independent study, school enrichment, day camps, summer camps. So there's lots of ways that kids can be involved in 4-H. And by the way, the 4-H's are head, <laughs> heart, hands, and health. I knew it was so much good. I was French and SB, I didn't know the answer. Well, so how do you target it? Or recruit. How do you how do you get people, the kids, to join 4-H? Well, uh, that's something that we obviously are, it's a it's a continuous process. Yeah. Uh, you know, we we try to focus and have programs for kind of all the ages and stages. You know, so mm -hmm. uh, we do things like our newsletter, or we do the radio, or we come and talk to you for there things. There you like go. That's what we're here for. <laughs> so, uh, we're excited. We actually have uh, our project clubs coming up. And those are what we call January to June clubs. And uh, so that's kind of what we're getting into this at the beginning of this year and what we wanted to come and kind of talk to you about and, and kind of get out there in the community what we have going on, what we have Okay, well, before we get into your events, one thing I know, you uh, you go to these 4-H, uh, they do all kinds of uh, crafts, and I've seen mm -hmm. that done. But they also got anything like gun shooting. I mean, there's a lot of things in 4-H that people may not realize the activities that go on. But, I mean, it, it, it's a long, wide range of what, what you all do. Yeah, definitely. Um, 4-H kind of emerged years ago um, through Extension, mm -hmm. and um, the universities had agricultural experiment stations. And so they were finding out nice research and things that were going to make people healthier, their lives easier. And as hard-headed adults, they would tell us, and we're like, nah, I'll just do it the way I used to do it. <laughs> and as most parents know, and most people know, you know, if a kid learns something, they're going to come home and they're going to pester you about yeah. it. And so 4-H um, clubs kind of emerged with um, cooking and canning. Um, they were finding out... Um, you know, some people were canning in ways that would make them sick, yeah. so they were teaching the kids stuff, and they would take it home. And 4-H has come a long way. It's yeah. not cooking and canning by itself anymore. We do still have those same yeah. skills and teach a lot of heritage skills to our kids. But um, I have kids that have gone to aerospace camp and have flown a plane. So in Nelson County, we have community clubs um, like sport fishing. Uh -huh. We do have a shooting sports club. Um, but as you can see, Luke and I are the only two 4-H agents in Nelson County, which is super exciting because it just used to be myself and assistant. And yeah. When Judy Creech retired, we realized the community's growing, so we added another position. We're glad to have Luke help us be able to expand our programming. Um, so we are able to do that not just with us, but because we have an army of volunteers. Mm -hmm. Our volunteers go through a client protection screening process. They have training. They have wonderful resources to use. And so um, if you're ever interested in volunteering for 4-H, you can contact our office at 348-9204. Um, you can volunteer for one day as a judge. Uh -huh. You can volunteer once a month as a club leader. You can go to camp with us. So there's lots of ways people can volunteer. They can even come in the office and volunteer and do some administrative yeah. work too. Well, speaking of going to camp, I had a friend of mine used to be a counselor. May still be Bonnie Drake. I mean, I know she yeah. did it for yeah. years, and uh, she called herself the porch lady because she said she sat on the porch and made sure people did what it is they're supposed to do. What is camp? What is 4-H camp? Right? Well, it's uh, it's an opportunity for kids to get to know each other from all over the county. You know, mm -hmm. we have kids from all different schools, um, all different ages, and it's also a leadership opportunity for our teens and then also for young adults uh, to kind of come and help us and get to get that experience of working with kids and how they kind of operate. Um, so it's really a neat a neat opportunity for kids and for teens, adults as well. But uh, funny you mentioned Bonnie Drake because I think she's, it's kind of an evolution. So she is now the night ninja, not, not only the, the uh, Well, the she keeper. scared me a little too, but that's very sad. <laughs> So I don't know, Danielle, would you, I mean, you have probably have some more camp experiences. Obviously, I'm fairly new to the, 
to the 4-H world. You have been tied to a chair. Yet. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so Danielle might be able to kind of explain a little bit about Yeah, 4-H camp. camp is one of our signature programs, not just in the county, but in the state. Uh -huh. And last year, Nelson County took over 300 people to camp. Mm. That includes around 60 volunteers, teens, and adults. And what we really enjoy about camp is um, during that week of camp, you know, all kids are pretty equal. Mm. You know, we all have a, the availability of the same activities, the same resources. Um, I met friends at camp that, you know, I've been in their weddings. And um, I actually worked summers at camp, and I really yeah. believe in the camping program because not only does it give kids an opportunity to develop friendships, but in 4-H we really like to develop life skills as well. Yeah. So some of those kids will try activities or events that you know may spark an interest in a career, or they may overcome a fear, or you know, like I said, they might make friends that they mm -hmm. are friends with for their entire life. So um, this year's camp is June 22nd to the 26th. Um, we don't have applications available just yet. Um, I'm hoping at the end of this month the state will um, finalize their paperwork and then we'll start getting that information out. But um, we like to go ahead and let people know those dates ahead of time. Yeah. So our volunteers and our families that go, they can plan their vacations around it. And we even have some other um, youth organizations in the county that plan their events around it because they know 4-H camp is an important part of our youth community Absolutely. during the summer. And there's a lot of things I know that I learned. My, ch my children were in 4-H years ago, and I remember one of them learning electricity and photography, things like that that you don't think about. You know, there's a, and you, when you mention life skills, that's what sort of mm -hmm. reminded me. What kind of events you got coming up anytime soon? Is there anything we need to know about? Yeah, so um, one of the main reasons we came today was to talk about some of those project clubs you were just referring mm -hmm. to. Um, our project clubs, and you can see... Um, um, this is our newsletter, um, and we send this newsletter out about once a month. Sometimes in our busier months, we'll skip a month or double up a month. Um, but we highlight some of the successes of 4-Hers. We highlight some of our upcoming events. If anybody ever wants to be put on that mailing list, again, they can just call the Extension Office. That number is 348-9204, um, and just ask to be put on the 4-H newsletter mailing list. But um, So the project clubs... Um, they are a shorter term interest club. It's not a year round club. So some of our families that may have other commitments and sports in the fall and things like that, this may fit their schedules a little bit better. Um, we used to call them January to June clubs, but with the weather, inevitably they ended up being February to July. So um, we call them our project clubs and there are several different ones, but a common thread that runs through them all is the kids are gonna learn about safety. Uh -huh. They're going to learn some of the skills involved in that particular project. They'll complete a project in, which is eligible to be entered into the county fair. And when kids enter stuff in the county fair, it's judged based on quality and the Danish system. Mm -hmm. So a blue ribbon quality project, it meets and exceeds the standards. Red ribbon, they may need a little bit of improvement. Yeah. And white ribbon, they need multiple things to improve to get to that standard of quality. What's really cool about those ribbons too with our kids, um, we like to say with 4-H we invest in our kids' future. Yeah. If they enter things into the fair, those ribbons come with a premium. And there are some kids who save their 4-H money specifically towards college or yeah. towards a down payment on a car or something. Yeah. So they enter a project and then they also have the opportunity to do a service project which is related to the project that they're mm -hmm. doing. And they learn about careers. So. Our project clubs we're really excited about, but one of the first things we want to talk about, of course, is weather. Mm -hmm. um, our, most of our project clubs are going to meet about once a month, yeah. um, but if Nelson County schools are canceled for weather, then all of our 4-H events are mm -hmm. going to be canceled for weather. And we typically will put that on our Facebook page and put it on the radio and things like that. Um, but we have lots of clubs coming up. I'll talk about a few, and then sure. I'll let Luke talk about a few as well. Um, What's been really nice about having Luke come on board is we were able to split responsibilities. So in extension, we're supposed to know everything. <laughs> Luckily, we don't have all to. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> Sometimes I, I'm like, call duty, don't yeah, call duty. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, one thing that's great about extension, if we don't know, there's somebody at the university who does know. Right. But now I just have to know half of that, so that's good. Um, <laughs> but one of the activities that we're excited about is our Natural Resources Club. Um, 
Holly Lawrence works at the Nelson County Public Library and she's going to be our leader for that this year and she's going to offer it a little differently this year. She's going to actually offer multiple meetings a month. So um, the Natural Resources Club is going to meet at the library um, from 4 to 5 p.m. on Tuesdays and they will have the opportunity to learn about wildlife, forestry, and geology. And she's gonna even um, add a little bit of information about books that they could read that mm -hmm. they would be interested in. Um, then another one that's gonna be offered a little differently this year is our scrapbooking club. In the past, our scrapbooking club has had a little smaller numbers. And a lot of times as kids get busier with sports, they're not able to make that longer term commitment. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna do three workshops. Um, we're going to have a workshop on Saturday, February 28th, Saturday, March 28th, and um, Saturday, April 10th, which I believe one of those is actually a Friday. But, mm -hmm. um, so there'll be a couple hour workshops where the kids will learn skills wow. and how to scrapbook. Um, what's really great about scrapbooking is it's a form of record keeping. Mm -hmm. And as we as adults know, you do have to keep records. And so that's a good, fun way for kids to begin to start keeping records. Right. Right. Um, We'll also have an ATV safety program as a spring break day camp, and we're going to have a CPR day camp in February. And that is with our health and safety project. Mm -hmm. um, we have a woodworking club, and that one is also going to meet on Tuesdays at the Civic Center, which you know where that's at. Uh, <laughs> quite familiar. <laughs> um, so the, the Civic Center, the health department, and the extension office are all in the same building. Right. And we're excited about woodworking. The kids always make great projects to enter into the fair with that. And in Nelson County, woodworking is a skill that mm -hmm. a lot of our um, businesses and industries need. Exactly. We have lots of cabinet exactly. making and specialty mm -hmm. woodworking shops here in Nelson well, County. Well, before we go a much further on that, because I know I've, I've talked to some friends of mine who are not kids. I mean, they're older people. What, what is a, What's the age limit? Is there an age limit at 4-H or, uh, or is this, am I thinking of something else? No, generally it's uh, 9 to 18. Uh -huh. uh, we do have stuff that we do, whether it's day camps or things like that. Even some people participate where we have younger kids who we call clover buds uh -huh. uh, that come and participate, but they can't compete at a, a competitive okay. competitive level, whether it's at the county fair or the okay. state fair. But they can still learn all these skills. Yeah, right? learning, is a, that's, that's a good thing, yeah. whether, whether you're competing or not. Absolutely, and I think uh, sometimes people get bogged down in the fact that you know, 4-H is agriculture, 4-H is uh -huh. cooking and sewing. Right. They have this kind of a stigma, but I think it's important for people to remember that even if you don't have these skills or you don't think you have any interest in learning these skills, mm -hmm. we, we have a lot of fun. You know, mm -hmm. we have a lot of fun with these things, and you don't have to have, you know, those skills to come and participate. You know, so. and it's just one part of Extension, too. Extension does other things beyond 4-H, yeah, and, I, and I guess that's what I was... Sure, I know that they even have classes on how to balance your checkbook and things of that oh, yeah. nature. So uh, there's a lot of things that extension people just probably don't know about or just uh, unless they need it. Right. Mm -hmm. But 4-H again is one one segment of extension. Yes. And um, before I let Luke talk about the clubs that he's coordinating, um, I want to invite anybody who's interested in any of these clubs. We're going to do an organizational meeting. Mm -hmm. And we're going to have that on Monday, January 26th from 5.30 to 6.30 at the Civic Center. So again, the Civic Center is near the health department. And we ask that a parent or guardian does come with the child because you do get a little bit of paperwork. Um, but you'll have the opportunity to meet some of the leaders to learn a little bit more about the clubs. And again, Monday, January 26th at the Civic Center if you're interested in any of the project clubs that we're talking about today. Okay. Yeah, well, Luke, fill us in on yeah, that. That's the cheat sheet over. The paper. Yeah, the <laughs> paper. We only had one. Uh, but we have, I have a couple things coming up uh, as far as my responsibilities go. Uh, we have our market-to-market uh, -market ham club that will uh, be curing hams beginning January 24th. So we're going to actually... Any tasters for that? Uh, <laughs> yeah, we actually do. We may need that yeah, come county fair time. So yeah. uh, please, yeah, by all means. But... Uh, it'll be a good time. We're actually going to be doing that at uh, Thomas Nelson High School, and we've invited a couple. Now that's of an them. art that you probably nobody <laughs> thinks about out there is how to cure how a to ham. ham. My that's grandparents probably did that, but uh, my parents, my generation, that's not something we do a whole lot.
hams that you're going to teach kids how to do it. That's exactly right. It's more it's a heritage skill, you know, and, uh -huh. and as, as a culture, I guess each state, each county, each community has their own culture, you yeah. know, and it's important to keep those traditions alive. Right, absolutely. So uh, we're going to be doing that. We'll be doing that at Thomas Nelson High School. Like I said, we have a couple of the FFA advisors there from the high school that are going to participate with us and mm -hmm. learn how to cure a ham, so we should have a lot of fun with that mm -hmm. and obviously learn a lot about you know, where the ham comes from well, sure. and then how it gets from... It doesn't come from the devil. <laughs> right, exactly. We don't just go to, go to Walmart, you know. That's so, right. Uh, we'll, we'll learn a lot about where it comes from, and then uh, at the end of the year, we'll participate in a speech contest at mm -hmm. the state fair, so they'll get a, a chance to kind of practice those communication skills as well. So it's kind of an all-inclusive program. It's really neat for kids to participate in. Uh, also, we have cooking club that's coming up, and most of these meet in February. We'll begin to meet in February after we have that inf informational mm -hmm. meeting that Danielle told you about. Uh, but that's led by Candace Walton, and she does an awesome job. I mean, from Asian to Indian to American to Italian, I mean, everything I've tasted that she's cooked and had the kids Candace help with has, imagination. <laughs> <laughs> has just been uh, out of this world. So. Kids learn a lot about whether it's you know food safety, preparation, mm -hmm. trying to prevent foodborne illness, things like that, but then also just how to make food taste good. Yeah. You know? and, and pretty. They do a good, they do a good <laughs> job on plating and presentation. Yeah, mm -hmm. Absolutely. And then uh, photography, uh, the Jackies have led that for a long time and they mm -hmm. just do a great job uh, with, with all the, the different camera skills. I'm not a a uh, photographer myself, but that's why we have people in the community that are... That's why mine has automatic. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, so we have photography coming up. Uh, that meeting's going to be February 16th, and then I think this year we're going to try to have kind of an advanced level class as well, where yeah. kids who have been in the program for a while are teens now, and they've kind of learned all the basics, and they want to get a little bit more in-depth, so yeah. that'll be on February 23rd. So whether you're a beginner, or you're an intermediate, or you want to kind of get into the different lenses and camera angles and things like that. They'll uh, be doing that again this, this year as well. Uh, and then the last one that I would like to talk about was uh, needlework. And uh, we're kind of doing something a little different. Like Danielle said, with scrapbooking, uh, we're gonna have some workshops. We're not real sure when those dates will be, but we're kind of trying to mix things up a little bit and uh, cater it to, and, to and people's And again, that's schedules. another, another so, skill that is going by the wayside. Is, is people doing a, a, access embroideries and or anything of that nature, just knowing right. how to sew. Exactly. Simple as that. I mean, I know when I was in the military, it's something you had to know how to do is sew, and I was very poor at it. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know how many of these shirts I've had that the buttons popped off, and, you know, you're, you're able to, to fix those things. And they frown <laughs> on it when you so, staple them up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I haven't tried that yet, but that might be an option. Well, it hurts if you wear the shirt. <laughs> exactly. So, obviously, a lot of things coming up whether it's in uh, the, at the end of January or the beginning of February that we're just uh, pretty excited about and like I said we have a lot of fun uh, and, and we're trying to kind of break those stigmas of what people think yeah. 4-H is because we, we it's really all-encompassing and if you have something that you have a skill at that you'd like to come and volunteer and start a club whether it's you know anything under the sun physical activity nutrition Whatever you think you might want yeah, to don't start. Don't bring your money, yeah, still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll round all that. Yeah, we'll, we'll count that one out. But but uh, you know, it's really just a, a great program, and and really can go wherever wherever people would like it. Well, like I said, we've we've been imparted a, a lot of information for you today. But the main information we want to impart on you is basically this is for. Uh, what you say, ages uh, 8 through 18 or something? 9, nine, nine through, through 18. 18 but and if you're looking for something to do, looking for something to produce, looking for something to train in, a, a life skill, give you guys a call. Absolutely. And, well, and that number, I mean, uh, again, one more time, it's a 502 <laughs> area code. 348-9204. <laughs> and if you aren't a youth or if you don't have children but you still want to be involved in 4-H, we definitely um, rely on our volunteers. So if you're interested in volunteering, again, please give us a call. Um, we're not able to offer one of our project clubs this year because we don't have a leader yet. So if you know somebody that's skilled in small engines, um, that's one that we have a big interest in from our kids, mm -hmm. but we don't quite have a leader yet. So if you know okay. somebody, send them our way. Um, about a three-hour commitment a month for about five months. And you're on Facebook, so somebody we wants are. to find you on Facebook. Um, they can search Nelson County Extension, and Nelson County is one word without a space. Mm -hmm. So Nelson County Space Extension, and all of our programs are shared on there, whether they're 4-H, 
um, horticulture or family consumer science or agriculture. Well, we appreciate everything you're doing right now because uh, training the next generation is absolutely important, so we do appreciate that. So Luke Fries and Danielle Hutchins, we appreciate you being in here and talking about 4-H, and we'll have you back. I mean, we will come absolutely. back as often as you can because yeah, I know to. this is very changeable. What's going on right now, next oh, two or yeah. three months, you may have something totally different that you, you're you offering or want to offer and, and, you, and some information you want to pass along, and that's what it's all about. We hope you're paying attention, and if you're looking for something for your children to do, hey, they're right here, and if you're looking for something to do to help out with the children, they're here too. <laughs> so, well, do appreciate you all stopping you. in here today, and, thank uh, you. and uh, yeah, thank wish you. you all the best of what you're doing. And hope you all stick around. We got a lot more to come here on Community Focus. Take care. We'll be right back.